Okay, step one is we need to realize that the instrument panel is static sensitive. It came from the era when electronics were static sensitive and especially inside the instrument panel. We do have some issues to worry about there. I am working on a static mat that is properly grounded. I am working with a static wrist bracelet. We have these available in the web store for only a few bucks and they're great insurance. We've disconnected the power to the instrument panel. We have it laying flat on a flat surface with, uh, with no towels under it, no, uh, no towels that might push the glass panels out of place. We're going to take a 7 32nd inch uh, socket and we're going to remove the screws that you see here and here, 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 and here. We're going to set those screws aside. If we're working on an 84, we'd find a sixth screw right here and we'd remove that as well. Next, we're going to take the back off and we're going to set that aside. Right now, we're showing you this first stage of disassembly. We're going to remove the top board and stop there. Inside, we're going to find an odometer connector. We're going to remove that and we'll remove the three screws that hold the odometer in place. Those are also 7 seconds of an inch. Next, we're gonna examine the odometer. We're gonna make sure that these two bearing plates are in place and that the wheels cannot fall away from the plastic housing. This one looks good, so we're going to set it aside. There are seven screws holding the main logic board in place. They're located here, 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 and two at the sides of the connector here and here. Those are seven thirty-seconds inch screws. We're going to remove those and set them aside. We'll take the screws out and set those aside. Next, we're going to remove the main logic board. We're going to be careful with this. We're going to we're going to set it someplace safe. We're going to gently lift the top board away from the bottom board. We'll wiggle that back and forth and it comes out. This one this one came out fairly easily. If your board is stuck at this point, a good way to uh, Loosen that connector is to use a, use a pair of pliers with a vinyl grip on them. We're going to insert them and we'll lever the top logic board away from the bottom board using the pliers. We're going to set that board aside. This completes the first phase of disassembly, removal of the top logic board. Next I'm going to show you how to disassemble the rest of the cluster. The only reason that I would ever do this is if I needed to access the solder joints on the back side of this, this board or if I were going to clean or replace uh, an LCD panel. Pretty much everything else can be done without removing this, uh, this bottom board. Bottom board is exceptionally static sensitive, so I would leave it in place if at all possible. If we do need to remove that, we find that there are 22 screws, which are also 7 seconds of an inch, that are holding this board in place. We're just going to remove those screws and set them aside. We're going to set those screws aside. The next step in disassembly is to gently lift the bottom circuit board away from the plastic housing. We're going to gently lift by one corner. Okay, this one has this one is not stuck, but sometimes the uh, the LCD panels and the, the uh, their connectors stick to the bottom board, and if they do, just just gently lift this away from them, starting from one edge and working your way across. And again, this is static sensitive, so we are going to handle it the least possible, and we're going to set this aside someplace safe. We'll continue on with disassembling the cluster by removing these three black plastic trays that hold the light diffusers in place. Okay. 
If we notice, this is absolutely full of debris. We've got an old paper label. We've got some uh, foam packing peanuts from uh, what the customer used to pack this. And it's full of uh, paint chips and dust and bugs and all kinds of other stuff. So uh, we'll clean this before we put it back together. Next, we're going to lift the three plastic light diffusers and set them aside. We're going to be very careful with these. They do have some raised pins that, uh, that can be broken. And so we'll just set those pointing up and we won't set them on top of each other so that we don't break anything. Next, we see a color filter. Uh, note the orientation. This is, uh, this is the proper direction to install this filter. If we look, there are several pins which index it in place. And we want to make sure to get those realigned when we put it back. But uh, to remove it, we're just going to gently lift that. We see this one has no, no damage, no, uh, no black paint stuck to it from the uh, back of the LCDs, so it can be used again. We'll set that aside. Here we see the three LCD panels. We see the speedometer panel. There is uh, a center engine information panel. And there is, uh, on the right side, we have the tachometer panel. We're going to gently lift the LCD panels. And we'll set them someplace safe. These are obviously 35 year old glass, so we're going to be careful with them. And we see a plastic housing which is pretty much full of junk and debris, but uh, in particular, we're going to remove the six rubber blocks that hold. those LCD panels in place. We're going to be very careful not to uh, put any sideways force on the pins that hold those those rubber blocks. Uh, they, they will break, so just be very careful when you're removing those rubber blocks. And again, this is full of debris. We will uh, we'll use some compressed air. We'll, um, we'll clean it. We'll clean the corners of the LCD panels before we put it back together and uh, make it look our best. But for now, we're going to set that aside. And here we see one of those LCD panels. What we have is the LCD panel itself, and we have uh, six pink rubber blocks. These are called elastomeric connectors, or zebra connectors. And right now, because of time and pressure, these are stuck to the LCD panel. They are not glued with anything, and we do not need to glue them when we put them back. The pressure from the screws that hold the bottom board will, will hold these in place. We just need to, uh, to make sure that they're clean on both ends, and uh, then we'll put them back. If at all possible, it would be a good idea to set these on a piece of paper, laid out exactly how you removed them, so that you can put them back the same way. Otherwise, uh, we'll have to go through a process of uh, trial and error in order to get everything back in place. So what I'm going to do for myself is I'm just going to gently peel these away from the LCD panel. I'm going to start at one edge, and I'm going to pry it slightly sideways, and I'm going to be very gentle with it. And I'm going to lay it exactly the way that it came off so that I can put it back there. And I'll do that for all six of these. I have removed the elastomeric connectors from this LCD panel. They were setting like that, and I just uh, peeled them away. The side that is closest to the LCD panel is the side that should touch it when, when I put this back together. So I'm going to set this piece of paper aside, and I'm going to go to the next panel and do the same thing. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to gently lift these away from the glass panel. And we're going to set them down on the piece of paper in exactly the orientation that they were attached. So what that does is it makes sure every single elastomeric connector goes back where it should. We're going to do the same thing for the third panel. We'll gently peel that away, set it on the paper. 
exactly the way that it was attached to the LCD panel. Okay, and we'll set that aside for safekeeping. If we look in the plastic housing, we'll see that there is a metal spring that is located in the top right corner of the engine information panel, which is the center panel. We're just going to remove that with a pair of needle nose pliers and set it aside. And that completes the disassembly of this 1986 Corvette instrument panel. My name is Brian Thompson, and I founded the website Betty.com, where you can find more free information and videos to fix Corvette electronics. You can also find the parts and tools you see us using in the videos. Thanks to your support, I'm proud to say that 10 Americans have jobs. Hi friends, 20 years of experience can make these repairs look easier than they really are. But don't worry, we have your back. If you're not getting the results you see here, then stop and pack it up and send it to us. We have the parts, the tools, and the experience needed to do the job right.